Water is not a want, water is a need. My everyday life is based around water. Each and every day, that's a need. And I need it now. Tonight, the state of emergency declared in Mississippi nearly 200,000 people cut off from clean water. This is our life. See what we've been dealing with all our lives here. The crisis after heavy rain and flooding from the Pearl River, flooding that the mayor says overwhelmed the main water treatment plant. This ain't nothing that happened overnight, three days ago, eight weeks ago, or back in March or September or August. It's still going on right now. The water is not safe to drink, and I would even say it's not safe to brush your teeth with. We still using bottled water, still have to boil water, still have to get out and go fetch water each and every day. I'm not putting this poison back in my kids because this is unclean water. Every morning we come downstairs, we get us a big tall bottle of water. They put it on their towel, they wash their face, and they brush their teeth. Each and every morning with it. There's some water in there. I'll put it on this night. Danica Samuel is a mom of six kids. They are four to 19 years old. Her family lives in South Jackson, Mississippi, where the water pressure returned to normal in September. The Mississippi Department of Health says the water is safe to drink for most residents, but Danica doesn't trust the water for her family because in Jackson, Mississippi, normal means relying on a water system that she and many in the city haven't trusted for decades. You should see my mama do the same thing that I do now for my kids, and I, I never knew why she got that bottle of water, what she doing with it. But this water always been messed up. You want some Apple Jacks? The need in Jackson is very real. Not only me and my six, it's thousands in Jackson that need water. I'm Zinclay. I'm Danica Samuel. You've lived in Jackson 36 years, your whole life. Why stop drinking the water four years ago exactly? What happened? I really got tired of just boiling the water because we always had boil water alert, boil water alert, boil water alert. And so four years ago, I said, you know what? I'm not drinking this water no more. Boil water alerts are common in Jackson, the city issuing more than 300 in the last two years alone, advising residents to boil water before cooking, brushing their teeth, or any activity that could lead to swallowing the water. In the city's own words, there's an increased chance that the water may contain disease-causing organisms. I do use Jackson water to take a bath, me and the kids. But I also use Clorox in the Jackson water. Bleach? Bleach. Every time I bathe me or my kids, I put bleach in my water. Do you worry about the effects on your skin or your health from that? Yes, and I just pray to the good Lord that God just wash it away purely for me and my kids to be healthy and safe. The country took notice when the water stopped flowing in Jackson in August, but the problems for the city didn't start when flooding knocked out an aging water treatment plant, and they didn't stop when the water returned. I've been reporting in the city since then, trying to answer a question many around the country have asked. How can an American city and a state capital with more than 150,000 residents repeatedly struggle to deliver a resource that most of us in industrialized nations take for granted. In Jackson, boiling water, having bottles of water, that's normal. And we've been living like it's been normal for years and years and years and years and years. 
Jackson's water system is one of the oldest in the country. Many of the pipes carrying the water are more than 100 years old. Residents regularly report broken water mains, leaking sewage, brown water, and low pressure. In 2020, the Environmental Protection Agency reported that the Jackson water system may present an imminent and substantial endangerment to people's health. And about two years later, the EPA followed up with another letter to the mayor and city council, demanding information about recent boil water alerts and the city's failure to adequately staff its water treatment facilities. That letter was sent just a month before the failure of the OB Curtis water treatment plant left residents of Jackson with no water at all. Willis, you come right here for what time? Seven days a week, Danica works for the Poor People's Campaign. The group partners with the city, distributing bottled water every single day, even though the governor has lifted the state of emergency. Danica gets her bottled water from work, but the people in Jackson tell me they're spending anywhere from $100 to $300 a month buying bottled water. This is in a state ranked the poorest in the nation. Residents also continue to receive water bills for hundreds or even thousands more for water they feel is not safe. We're not only in a water crisis, we're in a humanitarian crisis here in the city of Jackson. The scope of Jackson's water crisis is life or death. We have just decided as a community that we don't wait on government to save us, but that we're gonna get out here and save ourselves. Do you feel Jackson is out of the worst of the water crisis or is there more to come? I don't think we've seen the worst part of what's to come. Really? Right? You're dealing with a crumbling infrastructure. The system is very fragile. These boil water notices, we expect them to go on the next two, three, four, five years. We asked the mayor's office about that timeline. They declined to specify just how long water advisories will last, saying only that advisories will end when the city stops having water line breaks and losses in pressure. That truck is going to take sanitizer to uh, senior citizens' homes and daycare centers. Man, it's just a bad, it's a bad thing. It's, it's bad. a bad situation. My key is like, they're going to be boiling water. For the rest of their life. I have never known one, one time in my life since I've been living in Jackson, I was born in Jackson, Mississippi, that we never had a boil water alert. It's always been there, always. This crisis was also a wake-up call for us, that this problem is far more systemic than even I realize because I've normalized the dysfunction. What are the biggest issues you feel Jackson residents are facing when it comes to the water? Well, complete neglect by the state. Derek Johnson, the president and CEO of the NAACP, has lived in Jackson for 25 years. Hey, how's it going? Frank and Laura Figures are part of a discrimination complaint filed by the NAACP in September. The complaint claims racist policies by Governor Tate Reeves and the state of Mississippi, where leadership is majority white, allocated federal money to smaller, majority white communities instead of Jackson, where 83% of residents are black. They allege those policies meant Jackson lacked the money to make critical infrastructure repairs to its water system. This state, which is a poor state, whites have long used federal funds to discriminate against African Americans. Our appeal is to federal government, stop giving the state of Mississippi funds so they can use it to break the back of the African American community and poor people in this state. That's the legacy of Mississippi using public policy to create physical violence. It is a violent act of public policy to deny the citizens of this city clean drinking water. Johnson is continuing a tradition of civil rights activism in Mississippi, spurred by Medgar Evers, the first field officer for the NAACP in the state. We'll be demonstrating here until freedom comes to Negroes here in Jackson, Mississippi. Evers was assassinated in 1963 by a white supremacist, but only after he'd established several NAACP chapters and led protests against segregation. Brown versus Board of Education became law in 1954, but Mississippi resisted the desegregation of public schools for nearly two decades until a federal court order in 1969. When it finally did happen, Jackson experienced white flight, the massive exodus of white people to the surrounding suburbs. 
The city's subsequent decline drove away black middle class residents a decade later, and the tax base the city relies on to maintain the water system never recovered. Today, a quarter of Jackson's residents live below the poverty line. We come out and we do door to door and we deliver each and every day. Not only South Jackson, it's West Jackson, it's North Jackson. Yes, sir. Enough day on the job. Making sure people are alive, not in danger. I think I'm gonna get them a little knock on the door. Water. We are the black people that make Mississippi, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi at that. I love Mississippi. I would never, ever want to abandon my city. Never. And even though my city abandoned me. Since the crisis, the mayor and governor have blamed each other for the water system failures. Unfortunately, we've never received a real plan from Jackson on how to improve their water system so that the state could consider funding it. It's a somewhat bipolar analysis that the governor has each and every day. On, on some days, it's, you know, I want to be the savior of Jackson's water system. Then other days, it's, I want you to know how much the stain I have for Jackson. As always, a great day to not be in Jackson. Governor Reeves also discussed the possibility of privatizing Jackson's water system, a move city officials ardently oppose. We've reached out to Governor Reeves multiple times to talk, but he hasn't sat down for interviews since the crisis began. The one time he did answer questions was at a turkey pardoning in October. What we have proven over the last 52 days is the Water struggles in Jackson were specific to the incompetence of this administration and this mayor. Something that strikes me is that when you're talking about water in Jackson, you're never just talking about the water. The layers of the issues are compounding, and it feels like Jackson is nearing not just a boiling point, but also a breaking point, and this real opportunity for change. Come, Lord God, at this very important town hall meeting, asking, Lord God, that you will move, Lord God, that you will open up doors, Lord God, that everyone in this city, Lord God, will have clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. Would you be comfortable introducing me to the congressman? Sure. Before an NAACP town hall organized to talk about the water crisis, I chatted with Congressman Benny Thompson, the U.S. representative for Mississippi's 2nd Congressional District. As chair of the House Homeland Security Committee, Congressman Thompson began a formal investigation into Mississippi's distribution of federal funds for water system repairs in Jackson. I've spoken with the mayor, and when we ask about who should be accountable, it seems the city points the finger at the state, state at the city. The city is the owner of the system. The city's responsible. No question about it. But there's a fiduciary responsibility the state has because they have significant resources that we've made available. We being federal government. Federal government, and they have not uh, been an honest broker in the process as it relates to the city of Jackson. Thompson wrote a letter to Governor Reeves back in October asking about many of the same issues raised in the NAACP complaint, including why Jackson was the only city in Mississippi subject to additional oversight in its use of federal money specifically money provided by President Biden's American Rescue Plan. Reasonable people would want to know why did you single out Jackson for a different standard? Why do you think they did? Race. Yeah. I just want you to do right. If you do wrong, you have a problem. In a response to the congressman's letter, Governor Reeves stated there is no factual basis whatsoever to suggest that there has been an underinvestment in Jackson. He wrote that all federal money has been allocated on a, quote, race-neutral basis, and that Jackson received federal money every time the state got a request. People are suffering, and there is no help. It's falling on their ears. In his most recent budget recommendation, Reeves did not propose any funding for Jackson's water system at all. I'd like you to repeat after me. I deserve clean water. I deserve clean water. I deserve dependable water. 
Mayor Chokwe Antar Lumumba was sworn into office in 2017. At age 34, he became the youngest mayor in Jackson's history. He's the son of two lifelong community activists, and his father, a former mayor of Jackson, was involved in the revolutionary Black nationalist movement in the 70s. When I spoke to the mayor in September, this is filled with water from your taps. He said he does believe residents can drink the water adding that the issues with Jackson's water long predate his administration. And like many mayors before him, he's requested financial help from the state to solve a problem that he estimates could cost at least a billion dollars to fix. But Mamumba says those requests have gone unanswered. And if you had to, in a sentence, describe what is the norm when it comes to water in Jackson? I would say not dependable. I mean, some have likened what you're calling not dependable water here in Jackson to Flint, Michigan. I think that there are some parallels, but I think that this issue of uh, insecurity in water systems is not as unique as people believe it to be, right? Uh, I believe that Flint and Jackson are the tip of the iceberg. Jackson and Lumumba are facing numerous lawsuits over the management of the water system, including one over the threat of lead in the city's water. The case brought on by the same attorneys who won a $626 million settlement against the state of Michigan over lead in Flint's water supply. The CDC says lead causes a range of permanent health effects, including brain damage and behavioral issues. At issue in Jackson is a six-year standing advisory from the Mississippi State Department of Health, warning that children under six and pregnant women should not drink Jackson's water because of the possibility of lead poisoning. The state says that advisory is issued out of an abundance of caution. Jackson has a population almost twice the size of Flint, and advocates say their water issues have been going on for longer than Flint's did. Notably, when the city tells residents to boil their water, as it did in August, it does not warn them that raising a liquid's temperature can actually increase the concentration of lead. Could this put infants at greater risk? I'm not gonna reach a conclusion without the evidence that it's dangerous that for it's dangerous. infants. I don't, I don't know that, right? We only communicate what the EPA and the State Department of Health tell us to communicate. So do you think women and children should be drinking this water? As we sit down right now, the EPA is doing a comprehensive review of any threats or agents within our water. Uh, and we look forward to delivering that to you. Uh, so far, uh, they have been positive. They have not completed all of their tests. Uh, they have not found uh, any harmful agents at this particular time. Thank you. Thank, you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As this political fight persists, residents continue fighting for water in their community. Workers with the Poor People's Campaign handing out eight to 10 pallets of hand sanitizer and bottled water every single night. Here you go, ma'am. You have a glass of love. Folks just show up, they line up. We have people that are lining up as early as 3 o'clock. Two right? hours before. Two hours before. I mean, every day it's an influx of cars, right? And residents do not trust the water. We are poor. We, we are. Rich or poor, we need clean water to survive. And I didn't choose to be black. I didn't choose to live in a city that didn't have unclean water. I have my moments, my breaking points. You know, it's very tiring, it's humiliating, it's frustrating. But yet we know that we still have to show up for community. For me, in my eyes, there's no such thing as self-care when your community is dying. How you doing? Right. We out of water. We have more tomorrow, 5 o'clock. You can be in line at 4.30. Okay. God bless you. I want my six kids to have a wonderful future. I want this to go somewhere so my kids won't have to worry about unclean water. That we don't have to be second for nobody. What does water mean to you? Sick. Water means sick? Yeah. Why? Because it's your drinking sick.
reliable, clean drinking water. In doing this work, the department's newly created Office of Environmental Justice will continue to play a critical role engaging with the community on the ground in Jackson.